Hi, and welcome to Future Medicine Straight Talk with the Editor. Our guest today is none other than a most successful serial entrepreneur in the area of uh, technology-led learning and content platforms. Let me welcome Samir Sharif, the founder and chief executive officer of Impulses Inc. to talk about his latest Indian venture. His new venture provides one of the most professional e-training and skilling programs for the hospital staff and management, which helps improve patient safety standards and quality healthcare. Thank you uh, very much, Anikrishan, for having me here. And I uh, hope I can uh, give you some insights on our journey and what we're trying to do in the, in the Indian healthcare system over the next several years. Samir, your uh, new venture, IPC Health, is actually making waves in the Indian healthcare and the private hospitals in particular. So, could you please tell us uh, what prompted you to think about this idea and uh, uh, how impactful is this idea going to be in India? Um, really, um, IPC Health is our new company that we've set up from Impulses. It's, uh, we incubated at Impulses, really addressing the, the skilling and uh, content and learning requirements in the Indian uh, uh, healthcare sector. This is the first time as an entrepreneur that I'm really uh, addressing the Indian market. Uh, our parent company, Impulsus, which I founded 17 plus years ago, is in the content and learning space. We work with uh, some of the biggest uh, medical uh, publishing educational companies in the world. Yeah. Uh, companies like the American Heart Association, uh, commercial publishers like Reed Elsevier, Walters Kluwer. Uh, and we've been serving this uh, nurses, doctors, medical students across the world with technologies for learning and uh, content uh, consumption. And our market is global, primarily in the U.S. Uh, we are a U.S.-based company, Impulses is. As we were, I mean, as I came back to India, I wanted to build uh, companies here. A particular inst inst incident happened uh, within our company about uh, a few years ago. Four or yeah. five years ago, where one of our employees actually uh, went on uh, a break. Uh, Friday evening, he finished his work. Young, young employee mm -hmm. finished his uh, work, and he went to his hometown in Cochin uh, to actually have a s small medical uh, a dental procedure. And he actually uh, went with his parents to to the dental uh, uh, office and. Uh, uh, shockingly, he never left the dental chair. Uh, yeah. Passed away uh, because of a medical error. Yeah. That it was shocking for all of us because here was a young uh, professional, incredibly talented, positive energy. It struck me quite a, quite a bit of what happened and uh, why it happened. That was an incident. Uh, the other was I looked at, as an entrepreneur, I looked at advanced uh, countries like the U.S. and looked at how healthcare training development uh, and the infrastructure, technology infrastructure that was there. And it was quite advanced. I'm like, why can't we have similar kind of technologies here uh, in Asia and in India in particular? So that was a second. Lastly, I thought it was... Uh, it was fortuitous for us as a company that we were dealing with the best medical uh, content companies in the world, like the American Heart, Elsevier's, and the Kluwer's of the world. Yeah. So we had all the capabilities to actually address this problem. You know, so there aren't situations like what happened to our employee, where there are no, you know, medical errors is one of the biggest uh, reasons for uh, deaths in the healthcare sector. So how do you avoid that? How do you try to chip away at that percentage? And I think it is with better skilling, better training, and improving the quality of healthcare delivery through better skills. So that was the whole premise of the idea for IPC Health, 
you know, build world-class technology, which we were doing for global partners across the world, locally for the Indian hospital uh, sector. Yeah. Give them the technology, and that's one. But second, give them some amazing content. It's not just the technology. You can have the best technology, but if you don't have the right content to actually skill the employee in their particular category, be it nursing, medicine, technicians, if you don't have the right content, the technology is useless. So bringing the content with the right type of technologies, meaning to make it user-friendly, yeah. have it available at their fingertips, which is on, on their you know, smartphones, so it is easy for that nurse, it's easy for that practitioner, it's easy for the technician to actually upskill and right skill themselves for their requirements. So that's the idea that we had. We had all the capabilities, we had the experience, we have the network of contacts in the, you know, in the content space. So we put it all together and uh, we spent a lot of uh, money actually you know, understanding the hospital workflow and uh, understanding how hospitals need uh, to use the technology for different cases in the whole talent management side. And uh, we launched uh, the solution um, earlier this year and we've had quite a bit of success since then. So we're excited about uh, helping, I think we're focused at the hospital, helping the hospitals manage their greatest asset. Their greatest asset is people. And if we can help that hospital improve the skills of their employees, you know, that translates to better care delivered by that hospital to its patients. That's true. That's true. Very interesting. Very interesting uh, beginning. And you actually, you really identified that potential and the need, the critical need of that kind of a, uh, an education program in the area of healthcare. And, uh, but of course, uh, uh, it's not an easy task. Uh, 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 first of all, this, the, 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 the culture uh, in the Indian healthcare, or maybe if you look at many countries, you know, the healthcare is yet to evolve, yeah. uh, especially uh, in a country like India. So uh, you must have uh, come across with many challenging areas where to, how to resolve it and uh, how to make it uh, uh, a habit uh, among the healthcare professionals to go for this kind of uh, upgradation and uh, upskilling uh, uh, programs. So what was the, the, the biggest challenge you faced in this journey? So I think, I mean, uh, you take healthcare, right? I mean, healthcare is such a broad uh, industry and there's so many elements to it. Let me just talk about in general and specifically within the space that we're uh, uh, you know, going into, I think from a, if you look at the adoption of technology within the Indian healthcare scenario, it has been slow, right? And I think yeah. the mentality of the, you know, the, the healthcare market, uh, the, the, thought, the leaders within the healthcare market and, yeah. and actually leveraging technology to actually better manage different use cases and workflows within healthcare delivery has been incredibly slow. Mm -hmm. So I think that was uh, a real challenge. And just specifically, if you look at training and development, yeah. uh, and when we started researching the market, uh, and we saw that, you know, uh, the inefficiencies in what they were doing mm -hmm. and wastage of resources and, uh, money in actually doing the training. I mean, simple things like just look at the whole NABH certification process. Mm -hmm. you know? So more and more hospitals are getting certified by NABH. Uh, so to get that quality standards. And if you look at that whole, the, the situation and how that's managed, so many inefficiencies and so much of wastage of uh, resources. For example, each hospital mm -hmm. is trying their best to actually get NABH certification. Yeah. What do they do? They start putting together, they first decide that they need to get NABH certification mm -hmm. for number one. Two, then they decide, okay, we need to uh, figure out how to do it. So they either hire, you know, they had a quality, uh, head of learning and development start putting together the requirements for, for it. Either they, they 
so, you know, as they look out for content to support the training, there's nothing out there. Yeah. There's no standardized content out there. And we saw that as a glaring hole, you know. Uh, so what do they do? They start compiling content. So yeah. they start, they also look for external help. So they look for NABH consultants who come in and they have their content. Again, not standardized, you know, and they put something together and they create a training program. Now, uh, so that's wastage. Why can't there be a standardized content that not, so not, not every hospital goes and tries to go and find this content and try, and you don't even know if the content is correct. So that's wastage of resources there. Second is now, how do you train your 300, 500,000 employees? It's pretty much like herding cats into a, into a, uh, into a room, really no technologies, you know? pen and paper saying scheduling classes into a, a particular room then you know basically doing live classes in a, a room pen and paper to do testing you know yeah. there are rooms in hospitals where rooms are filled with test papers results where again answering them and now how do you manage you know the employees and understanding if employees have actually got their training have actually understood their training what level of training, what do they need improvements on? Completely you know, inefficient systems to actually manage that. And we were shocked that none of the, apart from maybe some of the big hospital chains, and this is, you can count them in your hands in India that actually have a learning management system. Yeah. We were shocked, no one had it. So that, you know, and this is a simple thing, I'm, being just a little bit more, you know, intelligent and say, hey, let us look at technology to see how we can solve a problem. Yeah. You know, there was no motivation to do that. And it is so easy to solve. So in learning and development, leveraging some of the technologies that we have, we can give that hospital huge savings in terms of managing the whole L&D process, managing talent and improving quality. This is just one instance within the whole healthcare industry. And I think the biggest challenge is for, you know, healthcare leadership to say that, let us look at technology in a strategic way to actually, in, there might be a slight capital investment, but the return on that investment will be high in a long term and improve the quality of delivery of care. Okay, okay. 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 Now, the, see, see uh, we all know that uh, uh, in the third world countries or maybe developing countries, you know, the, the, the economic setting or maybe the regulatory setting uh, is, is a big hurdle as far as the improvisation of the healthcare sector is concerned. So even for these kind of uh, technology-based uh, training programs, you know, the people will, will have some kind of reluctance in the initial stage, but uh, slowly that's changing. So wherein, uh, what you see, is it, is it only a problem of the mindset or there are challenges as far as the, the, the spending capacity of patients are also concerned to bring in these kind of modern changes in the healthcare? Yeah, I think the, the spending capacity is a concern, the economic uh, situation. These are all parameters in how the market plays. Right. We cannot say because uh, we, you know, because of those cases, we cannot execute in delivering better care. Okay. There are limitations. We need to play within those limitations. And I think, uh, you know, uh, there's multiple challenges within Indian healthcare system. I think, uh, you know, because of uh, programs like Ayushman Bharat, there's, you know, lower uh, payments on procedures. So you, you need yeah. to more efficient uh, care right? in costs have to be optimized right so it is a, I think Indian the private healthcare sector is in a very tough situation it's not easy mm. right but uh, uh, but this is the situation that uh, we're in and I think we need to look at all the different processes and I think there are you know, you know, technology can be one of the key uh, solutions.
to actually addressing, addressing some of the inefficiencies to bring the cost of delivery down, to match some of the economic, uh, um, you know, that, uh, you know, what the, uh, the end uh, economics of uh, consumption care is. So I think technology could be one of the ways to solve this problem. But it, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's, uh, I mean, I'm sitting on the other side. I'm a technology provider uh, right. serving, yeah. providing it to the healthcare sector. But I think, uh, you know, in any business, you look at the economics uh, of consumption, right? And yeah. try to deliver care. But at the end of the day, in any business, quality of product, mm. quality of care, is the ones that will, whoever can optimize that and deliver high quality are the ones that win in any market. So it's, we, Indian healthcare, the hospitals need to understand that, figure this out and do it through partnerships, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think where we're saying, what we're saying at IPC Health is, we will help you on the talent management side. Okay. You know, because we're not just, allowing, uh, you know, supporting you from a talent management. We are doing this to hundreds of hospitals. Yeah. We're training thousands of nurses and technicians and doctors and all, mm -hmm. and how to optimize their skills. So if they can collaborate with us, that hospital, in the training and development, we can invest in some of that. Okay. Our pricing to that hospital is not you know, it's our service is a software as a uh, software as a service solution. Mm -hmm. So even though we're spending millions of dollars on our platform and on the content, that individual hospital is not investing in that. It's investing in a small sliver okay. of investment. So okay. now they're going to get world class talent management solution mm -hmm. at a fraction of the price mm -hmm. to actually manage that piece of their delivery. Like that, if they look at the full healthcare spectrum and see who can their partners be mm. to optimize costs and to op optimize efficiency in those aspects of healthcare delivery, they will, you know, the companies that do that, now we're seeing it as we approach hospitals, you know, and as we approach different management groups, mm. some of them take this with open arms and say, yes, we need help. Yeah. Some of question it and really when you know when the pricing is an issue all of that they still question yeah. and they don't reluctance to adopt this to make that change yeah. so i think i mean their technology is part of the solution and i think hospitals have to have that open uh, mind to actually adopt that yeah, yeah yeah okay that's an interesting uh, view and also, uh, what what do you have to say about the regulatory aspects? Because that is also another factor which influences uh, how a hospital should be and how the care should be defined, and what kind of a patient outcome should be delivered. So, what about that that particular regulatory aspect, which plays a key role uh, in the in 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 the cases of uh, adopting this kind of technology and the improvisation? So, I mean, this is the whole reason, I mean, the regulatory is, I mean, be it, you know, delivery of care, I mean, quality of care with standards like NABH, you know, we are actually helping that hospital, you know, manage that more efficiently uh, across all their employees, right? And having the systems to actually give them the, you know, the analytics and the reporting and all of those things yeah. to uh, manage the regulatory affairs. Right. Okay. There's a, I, when we looked into this market, there's definitely a lack of, you know, uh, tool sets hmm. to help that hospital run that side more efficiently. Data is available, but the only challenge is data hasn't been managed properly. Hmm. You know, it was physical. Like, like I talked about how, you know, how uh, training was done in the classroom with through paper. That data is sitting in that paper. It's not digitized. If it was digitized, we could co collate that data and deliver res you know, reports that can be you know, used to manage regulatory comp uh, compliances, et cetera. So you're gonna see a lot of innovation there. IBC Health has uh, a lot of tools all around talent and management and quality delivery, uh, quality metrics 
that will actually help that hospital uh, with some of these regulations. Okay, okay. Uh, this is also interesting to know that, you know, what is the kind of effort you have put in to, to, to incorporate lots of factors, aspects and aspects and uh, regulatory things and the patient outcome uh, 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 factors into the platform of yours, uh, yeah. because that, that will only, you know, uh, will deliver the meaningful result uh, yeah. at the end of the day. So, yeah. so could you please tell us, uh, a little bit about that process. So what do you do? Where did you adopt these kind of things? Yeah. So, uh, and how successfully you could incorporate those things into your platforms? Yeah, so I think the solution, I said, there's just, there's three elements uh, to it. The first is technology. And it's just not, you can't just have technology. You got to yeah. have other elements. But the yeah. first one is... That, having, exa that exactly my question, yeah. Yeah. The first thing is having world-class technology, right? Yeah, yeah. But like I said, we've been serving global medical publishers and medical education companies for the last 10 years. Our, our delivery system for delivery, our software as a service delivery system, we've been innovating and investing in that for the last 10 years. The, our systems are used by millions of users across the world. Yeah. So it's a scalable, robust platform. So that experience and the investment, we leverage to build IPC Health. Mm -hmm. so, so we have a world-class learning talent management platform that is mobile fr first, mobile friendly, you know, and uh, has been tested yeah. through millions of dollars of the investment. So that's number one. So, but the second piece is content. So for example, <clears throat> what we realized is there was no standardized uh, content around NABH training. Yeah. Yep. So we got subject matter experts and put together over 165 courses. Mm -hmm. Each course is 20 to 60 minutes mm -hmm. on all the different standards for both pre and full accreditation. Mm -hmm. So we built these courses that were, you know, so we took a year to build these courses. We spent tremendous amounts of money to actually create this full curriculum. Yep. So that's, you know, content, but not only on NABH content, we are great partners. So we're going to be bringing out through our partnership with the American Heart Association, ACLS and BLS certification through the platform. We're going through our partnership with the Royal College of Nursing, a full training program yep. and education for nurses right we've got a great partnership with Caho we're working with Caho to actually create uh, you know programs that they've built yep. but our technical expertise and our capabilities of delivering you know training we're going to create you know take their content and actually make it really easy for uh, the medical professionals Right. So content is a key piece. We're also going to be working with all these publishers and societies to bring in, you know, uh, all their content to the market. So this is one avenue. This is a content. The third piece is workflows for the hospital. Hmm. We're we're basically, you know, carving out our platform to actually address inefficiencies in their talent management, uh, you know, processes. Mm -hmm. For example, one is just the whole recruiting and onboarding process. Yep. Again, all paper-based. Mm -hmm. From interviewing people, testing people, qualifying them, bringing them on, it's all paper-based. Yeah. We're automating that through technology. Once they select through, you know, their normal physical and through technology. The candidate, when they come on board, how do you get the onboarding to productivity ratio down? Mm. You know, how do you get that new employee to be productive on the on the uh, hospital floor yes. to minimize that? Yeah. Without too much investment, without too much multiple people training them in classroom, right? So we've got you know programs to do that. So really, our investment is, you know, a platform that's the highest technology capability, world-class technology, content that is world-class, 
and solution that is actually geared towards the hospital workflow. So over the last two years, we've been investing in it. And the fantastic thing is because this is a solution on the cloud, we're continuously innovating. We've got a roadmap of feature sets that we're going to deliver. So it's, uh, you know, you have a subscription solution. So your investment, capital investment is minimal. Okay. But you're continuously getting new features. Yeah. And you do not have to worry about the solution being dated. Right. So that's, uh, that's how we position it. And, and the way we've priced it, yeah. understanding you talked about the economic uh, reality yeah. of Indian healthcare. Yeah. We could have taken the solution and gone to the Middle East market. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. Our Eastern market. Yeah. But the reason we are attacking this market first, you know, for me personally, I mean, I told you this, that particular story. For me, I wanted to be successful in our home market. And I always felt that if we can crack the Indian market, every other market is going to be a piece of cake. So we're spending the next year and a half till the end of next year to really address the Indian market. And then we have global offices. We will you know, actually market this in the Middle East and the Far East. We wanna be a, a platform across Asia. So we're gonna get a tremendous amount of experience, which again reflects on helping you know, that individual hospital optimize their talent. That's true. That's true. And also the experience from a market like India, a challenging market is a big learning and yeah. that, that will help you. And that will really benefit you to, to, to understand other markets and to get into those markets. So, yeah. Uh, we, could you also please tell us that in what has been the experience or uh, how uh, the, the, the experience what when you dealt with the medical associations and healthcare bodies, because typically uh, I've seen the, uh, uh, many medical associations and the healthcare professional culture is often very conservative and they, they are quite reserved about, uh, you know, sharing the, the, their experience and uh, what needs to be done in the healthcare profession to an outsider. So how has been your experience in that area? I think uh, we're... The partnership with those kind of medical associations and bodies are very important for the creation of your content. Yeah. So this is very critical. So I think, again... Uh, you know, for IPC Health, yeah. our history at Impulsus, yeah. the goodwill that we've earned. See, when we, we work with about 40 to 50 societies in America and Europe, the Royal College of Nursing or the American Heart Association, American Association of Pediatrics or American Diabetes Association, yeah. all societies, and we've been working with them for over a decade. Yeah. Right? And when we do it, you know, it's not that we've worked with many Indian societies yet, but we are starting to work. But what we tell them is, look, we understand how these Western associations and societies work. Yes. This is how we've helped them. They, they are all mission driven, all the societies. But there's a commercial side, not for profit, for mission related progress that they blend really, really well. Indian societies and associations have to learn from those success stories and we've t what we're saying is we've helped these societies we can help you because yeah. the society's goal is really empowering their membership and empowering their areas of focus yeah, yeah. they're not a technology company yes yeah. so if they can get a partner in you know, helping them with technology, then they can really figure out how best to maximize their goal and their mission. Mm. Right. So in that sense, we've started engaging and CAHO is an example. And I think we're gonna do some amazing work because what they're trying to do is improve the quality of care yep. in Indian hospitals. Yep. We're trying to do the same thing. And I think there's synergetic uh, goals there. And we look forward to working with them and other associations in the Indian healthcare sector. Okay, okay, good. And uh, what, what is the most promising trend what you see in, uh, I'm, I'm actually, most of my questions are focused on India because we cater to the Indian uh, healthcare professional readers. 
so uh, that's why you may wonder that and you know, why I'm, I'm emphasizing on the on the indian market always but uh, this is the reason what is the now you have you have uh, worked with the associations and the medical uh, societies uh, you have worked with the hospital management uh, uh, you are already providing you are a, you are a, one of the leading provider of uh, contents for the medical professionals to upgrade their skills what is the most promising trend what you see in this market uh, as far as the medical learning for the healthcare professionals are concerned i think i mean i'm an optimist but uh, i'm super excited about uh, the future of india mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we talked about some of the challenges that hospitals have in terms of economics and all that, but the sheer scale mm. of what the work that needs to be done in India mm. is incredible. Okay. It's one of the biggest markets in the world, right? We have a billion plus people, and look at the numbers. India is going to grow at a certain pace. Yes, that means India is just going to get richer and richer. over the next decade two decades look at the gdp spend on healthcare compared to all the countries we are one of the lowest in the world yeah that's going to change look at the number of nurses required in the market look at the number of doctors look at the number of vets as we become richer as a nation the demand is going to you know all of this will actually increase yeah now for us from an ipc health perspective it's about skilling yeah there's inadequate amounts of you know education i mean even though there's a certain number of doctors and nursing staff coming out that's still inadequate so that that's a problem that needs to be solved but when that those professionals students come out into the real world the gap between what they learn in college and what is required in real life yeah there's a gap and that is an opportunity for companies like ourselves that can can we can, that can be met it's a massive gap so that gap can only be met i believe through technology yeah and tools to help the students that come out of college medical school nursing school you know, allied health schools into the medical world and really help the you know the healthcare sector organizations yeah. actually get their skills to a to, you know to a level that they can be productive i think in the next decade the next two decades tremendous growth that india has yeah and in that growth there we need to have a lot of institutions and a lot of technologies to support that growth and we want to be one of the the best companies out there to help in that in the healthcare sector and uh, let me now and i am i'm going back to the current scenario which uh, we all are uh, going through and facing this uh, raging pandemic where uh, it has been almost proved that you know most of the standardized care what we have been uh, we have understood or we have been maintaining uh, in most of the hospitals and even not only in india worldwide some of the concepts have completely you know gone haywire uh, with this uh, yet to understand disease or a pandemic situation like this so is there is there any learning for companies like you all to to learn from this kind of a critical situation and condition and to change or maybe uh, include in the content so a couple of things i think uh, how is the pandemic impacted especially our sector i mean uh, and what have we done uh, from a content perspective and all i think uh, uh, one thing is we th- i mean i mean the pandemic has hit the healthcare sector in multiple ways i mean one is the pandemic itself but the repercussions of you know hospitals being you know the economy economy being shut down and yes. fear of people going out getting them treated for other illnesses uh um so but i think one thing that we've seen is that uh is that the demand for our services we yeah. you know even though our sales people can't go out on visit you know we have yeah the demand has been lower but it's not not existed yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So we're seeing our the hospitals looking and actually, you know, we're signing hospitals up, mm-hmm. in, even in this kind of dire situations. So they are seeing that platforms like ourselves can actually help them during this uh, pandemic. That's number one. Two, a lot of hospitals have challenges even having their staff come to their hospitals. You know, staff like, you know, they being, you know, not because of the pandemic, right? So they're using digital to actually manage some of their learning, manage some of their communication and uh, their teams. So this whole, some of the hospitals, they're saying they have gotten away with physical training. They're, the ones that have used IPC Health for the last six uh, to eight months are saying we're just using IPC Health and we're, because of the uh, contactless and distancing, mm-hmm. we're using IPC Health as the you know, platform to train yeah. versus bringing them into a classroom. Yeah. These are all positives. On the content itself, we've actually created a whole COVID-19 resource center. We've actually created courses around COVID-19, uh, leveraging our expertise. So it's all, and we've given this away for free. So we've, on IPC Health, we have a resource center where we have courses on COVID-19. We have white papers. We have you know, uh, uh, materials from the CDC and WHO. Plus, we have these things called uh, virtual classes that we've done, a, a few of them, where we bring in experts around COVID-19 and actually have these webinars, which we then transform into courses. Mm-hmm. And we've uploaded as uh, free, uh, freely available on the platform. So, and we're, the other thing that we've told, and this is the crazy part, we've told all these hospitals that you can take the platform and utilize a platform to give these courses. We've got a lot of free courses, free to the hospitals. Yeah. Free of cost, you can take the platform and use these courses for at least uh, all the COVID-19 courses and some of the onboarding courses. And this is, a, I mean, I would have expected everyone to say, yes, that's fine. But the reluctance, and this goes back to the reluctance of actually being open to adopting technology, to it, at least experiment with technology to see how to uh, optimize inefficiencies. You know, people, I mean, we do uh, have uh, hospitals taking it, but a lot of them don't even take it. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. But why is it happening? Why, why is it? Why the people are, why the hospitals are reluctant? Because they're too busy. Why is it? But busy is not always good. You have to take a step back and see what the right, you know, how do we put in the right processes to make you more efficient with the busyness? So, you know, there, I mean, there is a lot of things that, hey, we're addressing this COVID pandemic and we can't do anything else. But, you know, a hospital is, you know, it's a full organization. Not everyone has to address it. Others can, you know, certain teams can address how do we optimize system. So I think it's uh, really uh, a lack of management skills and how they actually are delivering care. Do you think, uh, do you also think, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the, the preparation for facing the situation of a pandemic like this, the, including lots of uh, preparations for the healthcare professionals, nurses, doctors, and all like, uh, you know, how do you use the PPE uh, properly? how to use the mask properly because uh, we in our one of our earlier webinars on this particular subject we could see many healthcare professionals including doctors were not really aware of that what is the what is the way we have to get adopted to this this kind of a situation so uh, do you think uh, that also can be a kind of a content which can which you can utilize uh, mm-hmm. in your platforms yeah and we do have courses around that we have a full course on, uh, you know, on all of these uh, things and you, you know, to take the course and actually see, you know, in a best case scenario, post COVID and all, the best way to train is it's blended. It's not just online and no physical. It's, and uh, it can't be just physical and no online. You know, the best way to train optimally your staff is 
online and some physical. Okay. You do the online and let them learn all the theory. Mm. Physical is to, for, to be more interactive, to really uh, engage in question and answer mm. for areas that you might have not understood online. So, but there's tremendous amounts of content, you know. And the other thing about our, our platform, it empowers the hospital. Mm. We give them a content uploader. We th give them a course creator. So let's say you have a PPE expert in your ho hospital. Mm. All he has to do is put together a couple of slides, right? Um, what PPE is. And then using IPZ Health, you can create a course where you can put the slides, take a small video of yourself explaining it. And then, you know, you put a test around that particular subject. Boom, course is done. You upload it onto uh, IPC Health. You assign it to all your staff and you make sure, and you then push it out. They get a notification on their phone. They have to do it. They get tested. Then you know out of your 100 staff, did all 100 take it? How many took it? How many passed? How many failed? Then you can say, okay, you know, 100 uh, took it, 80 passed, tw 20 didn't uh, really pass. Let's bring those 20 in a classroom, teach them, boom, with, you know, all 100 have now learned. That's much more efficient than saying, okay, I have a PPE expert, I have 100 employees, let's bring in a class of 20 each over a week to do it that way. So, again, tools to help minimize inefficiencies, right? And uh, really help in delivering better care. Sure. And uh, uh, the, the other uh, bigger aspect of what has emerged now is telemedicine because yeah. of distancing. Yeah. So uh, what's your view on that and uh, how your, your content platform can be, can, can be embedded with uh, this uh, particular aspect as well? Yes. What, 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 are the, what are the views and uh, you know, advice what you can give to, uh, the, uh, to other people as well as the healthcare society as well? No, so I think um, you know, digital is going to, in the post-COVID world, yeah. digital is going to transform how businesses are run. And healthcare, there's multiple digital technologies that will help. And telemedicine is, I mean, we're really questioning how, how we did things in the past, you know, I think regulatory was one of the big uh, hurdles in telemedicine. There was there was a lot of restrictions on what it is. Yeah, but the bill got passed after ten years of uh, introduction in the parliament. So, yeah. you know, I think you know what people are realizing is that you don't need to do things like how we did it. I mean, look at what we're doing today. I mean, work from home versus work from office. You know, companies like ourselves, we as a company were against work from home before COVID. Yeah. We thought it would be not as efficient. Yeah. When we were forced to move all 100% of our employees work from uh, home, we actually saw an uptick in productivity. We built some technologies to manage this new scenario. And now post COVID, we don't think we will go back to full work from office. We're going to have you know, a balance to optimize productivity and to optimize work-life balance, yeah. right? So in the same way, telemedicine was, it's an efficient way. Why do, if someone has a question or some small issue, why does that patient need to travel through a city like Bangalore for an hour, wait in, the, in a hospital for another hour, and then see the uh, doctor for a small, you know, small, you know, consultation, and then come back. It's complete waste on, you know, the patient's time, yeah. on resources like, you know, the, uh, the city resources like the, uh, you know, traffic and fuel, all of that, and walk-in traffic into the hospital. Yeah. So I think you're going to see transformation there. Now, how do we use our platform, right? So this is a knowledge platform for the hospital. And we're, like I said, we're going to continuously innovate because we're a software as a service solution. Our goal is to help, you know, the hospital manage their talent as effective as possible and actually manage their knowledge in that hospital. 
So when you have knowledge and you have the paper trail and you have a repository of knowledge, if you want to now slice and dice that knowledge, because we're, we're building some amazing artificial intelligent technologies for our core business in, with Impulses, with all our content players. We're building some great personalized you know, uh, technologies to personalize content, slice the content, make the content intelligent. Imagine if you have a knowledge bank for that hospital and you want to now slice that knowledge and provide it to that patient or, you know, to that doctor who's treating that patient or the nurse. Hmm. You can do all that uh, as you, you know, deliver this through a telemedicine platform. The world and software is so beautiful in, in a way because, you, you know, if you, software is malleable and the world, in the, you know, it's all on the cloud, it's architected openly. You could talk to different systems. Hmm. So a telehealth platform could talk to the IPC health platform to create better tools for the hospital as well as the patient so that they can get the most optimal experience. Okay, okay, good. Uh, what, according to you, what is the, the major uh, or what maybe one of the major changes or difference what you are going to make uh, in, the, in the content platform? for uh, Indian uh, healthcare industry. Meaning what are the changes? The, 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 the futuristic uh, uh, changes is what you see. Oh, I mean, if I take future, I mean, if you think about, so we're gonna be, see, we're not, we're in the business of knowledge and content and talent. Management. So if you think about, and we're delivering this on the, on the phone, yeah. right? Yeah. Phone is not a phone, this is a computer. And uh, if you want, I mean, now take artificial intelligence, so personalized skill development, yep. and then you take artificial, artificial reality, virtual reality, yep. right, and augmented reality. And so this is an AR, VR headgear. So you can pretty much, you know, that nurse or the doctor or that technician, that technician, new x-ray machine, or new uh, MRI, you know, how do you teach them on the fly? We push out a virtual course on that machine. The technician just now wears his phone. Yeah. He's now in a virtual world where he's handling that machine. And actually he gets taught on the fly, you know, a day before that machine comes. Look at the cost savings, look at the skill development, uh, and look at the quality of care delivered, right? At a very cost-effective way. So the augment technology and virtual reality hasn't yet uh, applied in, uh, in healthcare uh, uh, courses upgradation? There are, uh, there, there are. I mean, uh, we, we, we're seeing it uh, there, but I'm saying it's not at mass scale, but in a few mass years, yeah. We, yeah. Will, we will come mass scale. We're putting the, see, we're all building the, you know, the, the plumbing to do that. IPC Health is part of that plumbing into the Indian healthcare system to actually build on those kind of things in the future. So we're building, putting all the building blocks. Okay. Uh, and because if you don't have those building blocks, you can't jump to, you know, train yeah. at that level. So, but that's the future. And we're going to be, we're going to, you know, understand the hospital's, needs in learning and talent management to deliver a great value for it. Okay, thank you. And, and, and I think that's why it's not just about technology, it's about technology content. And the third piece is the hospital workflows. Having all those three actually be delivered in a great solution. Those companies that can do that will win. Okay. okay, okay, thank you. And maybe I'll take maybe one small last question that, you know, it's a basic question. Yeah. Uh, 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 now, now these kind of uh, the the IPC health uh, courses or any other whoever is providing the courses for the healthcare uh, professionals uh, skill skilling and uh, specialized training. Maybe uh, we lacked something in the basic education in the medical area. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you have any suggestions for the, the basic education as far as medical courses are concerned? Uh, basic which can, which can also be a good platform for, you know, the, the upgraded courses like yours. 
Yeah. So that's all this content. I mean, there are, so the question for us is that, like I said, it's uh, uh, right now we don't have it, right? Yeah. But we are a content platform, so we can take content and pour it into our, our, our platform. And as we go along with time, right, there's going to be more and more content that's going to go into this platform. So, I mean, if you think about, you take a Hotstar or Netflix or, you know, any of these streaming services, they have, you know, hours and hours of entertainment content. Yep. Right? Or you take YouTube, right? And the most amazing thing about YouTube or Netflix, as your YouTube, you know, Unni Krishnan's YouTube is different than Samir Sharif's YouTube. Or my Netflix is different than, you know, Unni Krishna's Netflix, because they're continuously learning what Unni Krishna knows, yeah. what he's, you know, what he wants to watch. Yeah. IPC Health will be the same. We are going to learn each individual. Yeah. If that, and we're going to be building our content library up. I mean, we're going to have all types of content in the content library for IPC Health. Yeah. Now, if that individual has some um, needs for basic medical training, yeah. we will bring that content in and then deliver it to that individual. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, that's, that's a very positive outlook. And uh, uh, do you have any advices to be given to maybe the authorities or the education departments, uh, uh, some kind of striking changes they have to make in the, in the, in the curriculum of the current MBBS or maybe uh, specialized courses? Yeah, I think, I mean, partnerships, technology is a phenomenal uh, game changer. Mm. But technology with companies that have expertise in those areas of technology uh, can be great partners with uh, the authorities or the different, uh, or the hospitals to actually innovate and deliver great values. So definitely adopt technology you know, to, to know, with partners who have that domain expertise and together work together to actually maximize the opportunities to deliver. I mean, in the healthcare sector for all of us is to deliver better quality of care to our nation, right? So I think partnerships is the way to go to do that. Thank you so much. That was really an insightful discussion. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you. Uh, uh, Thank you for having me. And I uh, wish Future Medicine best of luck. And I uh, look forward to engaging with uh, Future Medicine in the future. Because we've literally come, I mean, it's less than a year that we've uh, really, you know, been introduced to the market. But we're here uh, for the long, long run. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we'll meet again with uh, a new subject and new topics for interesting conversations like this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Bye.